morning and welcome back to episode three of our UE4 tutorial series. Something big has changed since last time and it's this thing right here. I no longer have to talk into my computer headset, which is really good both for you and for me. Last time we learned to use simple shapes in order to create a 3D level that you can walk around in, but there's not a lot of fun in that without being able to throw some color on it. So that's what we're gonna do today using materials and textures. Materials and textures are another really common concept in 3D game engines and just in 3D engines in general. In a nutshell, a texture is an image that's applied to a 3D object in order to change the appearance of its surfaces. That texture could be an actual photo, or it could be a hand-painted texture. For example, the majority of the textures in World of Warcraft are hand-painted textures. A material is something which takes that texture and then determines how it's going to actually be applied to that surface of the object. And the material can choose to add extra properties as it goes. So for example, the material could be used to change how bumpy the object is, how shiny it is, which would mean changing its specularity, or how glowy it is, which would involve changing its emissive properties, uh, as well as a bunch of other stuff. But the long and short of it is that you can't just apply a texture directly to an object. You have to send that texture through a material. But okay, enough of the educational part. Let's make some stuff glow and you'll pretty quickly see what I mean. So to get started, make sure that you have your scene open from last time. Yes, if you did the homework assignment, then this is the level that you put together. All of the things that we're learning today should kind of uh, not matter regardless of what your level looks like at this point. But in my case, uh, I built this kind of house situation. You can kind of see, I just put together a bunch of cubes. Um, I made four walls, a little door frame, and then inside here, you can see there's like a little floor, uh, but that's it. It's something really, really simple. I, all we're gonna do is put some textures and materials on the walls, floor, and door of this house. And then at the very end, we're gonna hang a painting. So to start, uh, we're gonna put some wood on the floor of this house. Uh, and here's the dirty secret of finding great textures when you're building a small project. If you go to Google Images and you type in name of thing you want plus texture, you will get a bunch of random free texture images that you can download and use. You probably can't use them commercially because they probably belong to somebody, but if you're just here to learn, then it should be okay. So today I'm gonna start by just Googling wood texture and then downloading an image that I find. Also important to note that this tutorial will work just as well with any image file you find. So uh, far be it from me to police the floor of your house. If you would like it to be something other than dark wood, please feel free to do that. Okay, so I've downloaded my texture and I've put it in this little folder on my desktop to make it easy to find. Pull up that folder, go ahead, click on that texture, and just drag it into your project right down here, drag and release, and it should automatically import and show up in the engine, which is pretty nifty. If you wanna put it in a subfolder to make it a little bit cleaner, that's also probably not a bad idea. You can right click down here, click new folder, type in um, textures, and I'm gonna go ahead and move that wood texture over here. You can, again, drag it over. And when it asks if you wanna move or copy, not 100% clear what advanced copy does. Don't worry about it. I've never used it. Uh, you wanna hit move here. So we are gonna go into that folder that we just created, take this wood texture that we put in here, click and drag onto the floor. Give it a second. It's gonna turn gray and then Wait for it. Oh, there it is, our wood material. So you'll see down here that actually UE4 auto created this wood mat. This is our material and this is the engine saying, hey, I can't apply the texture directly. I'm just gonna make a material for you, is that okay? So now we can actually tweak the properties of that material in order to change how this texture is applied to our object, which we probably wanna do because look at this wood, it's giant and terrible and looks nothing like a wood floor. So let's fix that. Uh, we're gonna take this wood material and we're gonna double click on it and it's gonna open up this very terrifying window. Uh, <laughs> this is the material editor. Uh, it's an incredibly powerful subsystem in UE4, which allows us to change many of the properties of materials so that we can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, Odds are good that if you are learning right now, you don't want to touch 98% of this. Um, there are some great tutorials out there that will go over advanced material editing. Uh, hopefully I can record a video for that later on. For now, I'll just link those in the comments below the video if you would really like to pursue advanced material editing. But for today, we're going to do something pretty simple. All we're going to do is change the tiling of this texture. The way that we're going to change that tiling is we're going to actually change some properties about this material's UV. So there's a third concept that might come in handy when you start thinking about editing textures and materials, and that's the UV. 
Um, why is it called a UV? Uh, basically, X, Y, and Z, the letters were already taken for anything that was like fully 3D. And since we're editing technically 2D images and materials, um, U and V were some letters left over that I guess they decided to pick. So they're called UVs. But basically what UVs do is they change uh, the way that your material is stretched over an object like uh, gifts wrapping paper on a present. So you can do things like tile the material. Uh, you can do things like stretch it different. Differently. You can do things like stretch it differently on some portions, but not others. Um, those are all advanced concepts. And for the most part, uh, unless you are doing advanced 3D editing, uh, graphical work, you probably shouldn't need to touch UVs for the most part. But I think it's handy to learn just how to do basic tiling in case that's something that you want to do to make your materials and textures look a little bit better. So in order to do that, we're going to have to modify the flow of this blueprint. And again, we're going to go into blueprinting more in future lessons. Uh, you don't need to understand or know all of this right now, but the basic gist is that blueprints start on the left, they have a bunch of noodles, and then they spit out a result on the right, and everything goes left to right. So we have this noodle over here, this, this text coordinate, or this node rather, and we're going to need to hook up some noodles to get it to spit out uh, some different properties on the wood. So right now the wood's just spitting out basically a texture. It's just saying, hey, I have a texture. As you can see, none of these nodes are connected except for the one that says, hey, send over my image data to the, the final result, which is this base color. Um, so it's not really doing anything. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little white circle here. We're going to drag off and release with your left mouse button. And you should see this little window pop up. Um, these are all of the possible things that you could do to manipulate your material along the way to its end result. So I want you to type in multiply. And you should see this node come up, uh, not multiply add, just multiply. Uh, click on that and it'll pop up. Uh, if you mess that up for some reason, you can always delete the node like this, hit the delete key, drag off, start again, multiply. So when we are using the multiply node, we are just changing the uh, multiplication of that texture over the material itself. So uh, for example, right now, basically by default, the texture has a multiplicity of one. It's being stretched one time across our entire floor, which looks pretty bad. It's actually even being stretched on the underside of the cube. Um, you could see here, uh, if I were to pan underneath the floor and look at the bottom of my floor, which is like stuck inside the floor of our level, I would actually see that texture going all the way around and wrapping. So we're just going to kind of change some of its tiling properties. So we're going to go here um, and uh, take the end result of this multiply node, hook it up to the UV because that's what we're modifying. And you'll see it kind of chug for a little second. There we go. And then it's going to spit out this path, basically. So now the material uh, knows that something has changed along the way, uh, but we haven't actually modified any of the properties of the, that multiply node yet. So that's what we're going to do now. So click into it. And you'll see over here on the left, um, these are basically where you change all of the properties of a material node that you are looking at. Again, a lot of this is blueprint. Don't worry about it. We're going to cover this in depth later. But if you want to change the tiling of a, a material just to make some of the materials and textures you'll be applying in this tutorial look better, you can do that here. Um, you're going to want to change this const b. Const stands for constant. Um, and that is how many times this material is going to try and multiply itself. So for example, if you set it to four, then the, the, the wood is going to tile four times, kind of like a little checkerboard pattern. Um, if you set it to 99, it's going to tile 99 times. Uh, you're going to have a lot of very tiny wood textures all over. So let's just change it to like six for now. Good even number. Um, go ahead and hit enter. It's going to chug for a little second. That's because it's thinking and it's regenerating that material. Okay. So it looks like nothing has changed. Um, that's okay. Go ahead and hit apply. And again, it's thinking and save. You always want to make sure, by the way, that you hit apply. If this is gray, then it means that your material is up to date and all of the changes that you've made to it have been saved and are reflected in your level. But if it's not gray, then that means you've probably made some change that you want to make sure you've applied. So we're doing that now. And now if we go back to our map, ooh, look, the wood has been a little more tiled. It's not quite as stretched as it was at the start. So if, for example, you know, let's go back and let's change it to some absurd number like 600 and hit enter here. Again, we'll hit apply. 
Oh, it's thinking. It's thinking hard. I can see my, my video chugging in the bottom right. We're going to save it. Go out here. Oh my god. It's so tiled. It's so tiled, in fact, that if you zoom all the way in, you can see that there's like a million little wood material textures all down our floor. So that is what a tiling of 600 looks like. 600 little wood textures all in a row. Um, so obviously we probably don't want it to be quite that textured. So again, we're going to go back to, you know, I think eight was like a good middle ground. Let's do that. So once we back out, you can see that our floor is looking pretty good. Um, let's say that we want to apply some wood to the door frame too. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to actually drag that wood material onto these cubes. And ooh, look at that. So, okay. So you'll notice right away that the tiling that we applied to the floor also applies to the door. So that tiling of eight looks great on the floor, not so great on the door frame, looks kind of silly. Um, if we wanted to change those settings, we would actually need to have a different material for the door frame. This is why video games are so large. They have a million different material files and texture files for everything in the game. Um, and a good 3D, 3D artist will actually handcraft uh, the texture, the UV and the material for every object in the entire game. And it's all like custom done. So um, we're not doing that because we're a little bit scrappier than that. So let's just right click on this wood mat Go up to here and duplicate it. Um, we're gonna call it like door mat to differentiate it. Um, from there, we're gonna actually click into our material. And again, we see that it has the same properties as the floor material did. So we probably want that to be a little bit different. Let's go ahead and change that to something smaller, like two. See it uh, change. Go ahead and hit apply. Should chug a little bit and hit save. And again, um, once we back out, We've still got that floor material on the door, but once we assign the door material here by dragging and dropping it, <laughs> the door looks a little more normal now, a little bit less dorky. It looks like a real wooden frame, which is pretty cool. Okay, uh, I think it's time for us to apply some colors to our house. So let's apply some color to the inside walls. Um, this time we're actually not gonna use a texture. We're just gonna use a material, which is something that we could do. It's possible to have a material with no texture, even though it's not possible to have a texture with no material. So let's right click and duplicate this wood mat. And we're just gonna call this one wallpaper because that's what it is. So you'll see right here, we get this kind of like blank material that looks just like the, the wood material. Um, and we're going to double click into that. It's got all the same nodes as the wood, uh, but we're just going to select these by clicking and dragging. We're just going to delete them, get rid of them, uh, because we want this to be a plain color and not use the texture at all. So now we can actually take this base color parameter, which is, uh, again, as the name implies, it's just the color of the material. Right click on that and promote to parameter. Again, you don't have to understand all this in the blueprinting tutorials. We will cover what all of these things mean. Um, but just for now, if you want to be making plain materials that are just one color, you can do that here. So we dragged off this node for the base color right here. Um, and it's just black right now. We're going to go into that and you can make it any color you want. Uh, so this could be, I don't know, I'm going to make my walls purple. Let's, let's pick purple. I like purple. Let me hit okay. And again, once we apply, that's when you should actually see those changes show up. There you go. So save that and then back out. And now we actually have a wallpaper. So take that and apply that to your walls. Heck yeah. Look at my beautiful purple walls. They're so nice. So nice and snazzy. Okay, but as promised, our house is not complete without a painting on the wall somewhere. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Um, I did take the liberty of uploading uh, this photo of my personal Lord and Savior, uh, Olivia Pope from Scandal, uh, which is an awesome show. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that in here. And uh, there's Olivia. She's looking good. And then next, we're going to actually create a plane. So go over here. Um, if you don't have, again, this shapes uh, tab open in the modes, just make sure that you grab that, uh, pull that open. And under basic shapes, we're going to take a plane. Um, which you may or may not be familiar with, depending on how much white boxing you did in our last exercise. Drag that in here, and you'll see right away that it's basically flat, and it's also on its side, which is really annoying. So we want to hang it on the wall like a painting. We're going to go to the rotate tool up here, um, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, which makes it perpendicular. 
uh, we're going to drag it up. I said drag it up. Thank you. And uh, let me focus in on that so I can see it better. And then we're going to scale it a little bit. Make it kind of big. Nice. Look at that. That is going to be so great. That is that is good. Um, And then just, yeah, just drag, drag your painting right on there. And um, as you can see, oh, she's upside down. Oh, no. OK, well, that won't do. So we're going to have to rotate her 180 degrees. And now when I hit play, I can enter my amazing home and uh, look at my painting anytime I want. So the last thing we're going to learn, which I think is going to make this house even more awesome, is how to make something glow. The first thing we're going to do is probably go ahead and back out and pull a new cube into our scene. Uh, and this is going to be kind of our lamp. We're going to make it glow as though it were a beautiful lamp. In order to do this, we're going to need to create yet another material. And we're going to change a property that's called emissiveness, uh, which basically is how much fake light this object gives off. It's not really a light. It's just appearing to give off light. So it won't actually cast shadows the way that a light would, which we'll cover later. Um, but it kind of looks glowy and that's pretty cool. So you can use this to make like neon signs, for example, if you'd like. So go ahead and right click on this wallpaper. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to call this one lamp. Uh, and we're going to give it a second to let that generate and then go ahead and open it up. So as you can see, it's, it's, loading but it actually is purple just like our wallpaper was um we don't really care about this base color here so let's just copy and paste uh, an extra node and we're going to link it up to the emissive color this time and um, the emissive color actually just completely overwrites the base color it's a, a special extra color layer that sits on top of the base color layer and it determines how uh, how glowy something is so what we need to do in order to change the emissive color right now it has an emissive value of one which is like so glowy that so minimally glowy that it's like not really doing anything interesting so we want to make it much glowier which means that we're going to need to push that emissive value past one so once again we're going to drag off from here and bring up our friend the multiply node and we're going to hook that up to the emissive color again Give that a second to let it generate. And now, I uh, so by the way, you can make that color anything you'd like. So in this case, um, I'm actually gonna make it like a kind of yellowy, warm peach colored light. Let's do that. I'm gonna take that and let it generate. And now when I modify this multiply node, let's make it like eight. Eight's a good number, right? Why not? Let's just see what happens. Uh, we are going to save that and also apply it, which is going to cause UV4 to chug for a second. Um, and then we're going to apply that lamp material onto our cube. And you can see it's glowing just a little bit. If we wanted to make it glow even more, we can go back to that and we can, I don't know, amp up that multiply to like 50. Let's make it 50. Why not? Let's go ahead and apply out oh my goodness it's like staring at the surface of the sun this cube is so glowy uh, <laughs> but we've learned how to make a lamp and you've learned how to make something that glows so that kind of puts a wrap on everything that we're going to cover today okay but now we get to the fun part where you actually go get to decorate the level that you made last time or you could just copy what I did in this tutorial and build your very own Olivia Pope house. No one is going to stop you. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments on this video and I'll do my best to try and get to them. Otherwise, I hope you have fun making your level beautiful and I'll see you next time.